Hello and welcome to Oddballs. We have spent the past few days searching London for the most weird and wonderful sports you have not yet heard of. Now we've all tried to make up our own game at some point or another. Maybe a variation on a sport or perhaps a combination of different sports. Few have enjoyed as much success as round net, more commonly known as spike ball, which brings elements of volleyball and foursquare all under one peculiar roof. Hello, we're here in Hyde Park to find out more about a sport that has enjoyed increased interest over the last few years or so, round net. Round net was originally created in 1989, inspired primarily by concepts from volleyball. The game experienced a revival in 2008 when Spikeball began promoting it. We went down to London Round Net's Wednesday evening session to see what the sport was really about. This is London Round Net. Um, we are just a group of friends that randomly met on WhatsApp and then we grew too big for WhatsApp and then went to Discord. But what we're playing here is Round Net. People usually know, know it as Spikeball because the brand of the set is Spikeball. Um, so yeah, we just literally after COVID, I think the sport really boomed through COVID because we we're all playing in groups of four in our little household, um, and then came out of co coming out of COVID, uh, we, we decided to meet up with other people and just j create this club. So this is London Roundnet Club here. How to play Roundnet? Um, so it's very easy. It's just two versus two. Uh, it's based on volleyball. So if you know volleyball rules, um, you have your partner and you have between yourselves up to three hits to get it back onto the net. Uh, and you strike the ball with your hand um, and it starts with a serve, you get two serves and then once, as soon as the serve's been hit, the game is 360 degrees so you can play anywhere. I'm actually from Australia and I played a little bit of the sport back home so just for fun on the beach as Aussies do in the summer and then we thought hey there's a little tournament going on so we joined and we actually won the tournament and we thought oh well, we're actually pretty good at this so I decided to go to nationals and came fourth in nationals and we thought this 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 could be an actual sport um, so didn't really take it too seriously until I came over to London and basically it's a sport in Europe if, if people didn't know um, there's a whole tour stop all over Europe and yeah some some of the players behind us are representing British um, round at this year at Euros and have represented Brit um, Britain and Australia last year at the World Cup. When I got into spikeball I was on a holiday in America, I was about 18 years old uh, with my family and we sort of saw this weird game in the park in Central Park and thought I'll have to give that a go and then uh, we basically brought it back to the UK, this must have been yeah, 10 years ago now. Back then you couldn't actually buy it in the UK, you had to sort of import it over from the States. And then just before COVID, I sort of started to get a bit more into it. I heard that there was a, a sort of a World Cup and it was a bit more of a serious sport than I probably first, first thought. And then sort of May last year, uh, made the national squad and then we did really well in the world, came seventh out of 35, which was, which was very cool. So I think people are really drawn to the game because it's just a mixture of so many games like volleyball, um, the hand and hand-eye coordination of squash, um, tennis and badminton, and then also a lot, quite a bit of footwork from football. So you, know, you, you see a lot of the players when they can't reach the ball, they actually kick it up as well. So yeah, it's basically a game of volleyball, but instead of hitting it over the net, you hit it onto the net. After hearing from the experts, it was then time to give it a go ourselves. <laughs> How'd you find that? Yeah, not shattered at all. No, it was good. Uh, Mark was right when he said that it's uh, sort of an amalgamation of lots of different sports and it's uh, a lot of fun. Um, yeah. Ollie, as somebody who's not played the sport before, what do you think? Yeah, no, it was really good. You know, like combination of a variety of different sports, you know, you've got to really cobble together, you know, lots of different skill sets. Yeah, really interesting to learn. With Spikeball's growing popularity across the globe, a number of its leading players are wondering, just how far can the sport go? Ultimate goal is to get into the Olympics, you know, like 10 years down the track, 15 years, um, and then just keep developing, you know, kids from high school age. So in 10 years, they'll be like pro level players. It'd be awesome to see. You can find us on Instagram, we're London Roundnet. Uh, and then from there, we'll give you a WhatsApp link, a Discord link where you can just find out where the actual sessions are. There's coaching clinics, there's pickup sessions, general games. Um, people might be looking for a fourth player. Um, and then also tournaments, whether they're just held here in London or in Birmingham or Manchester um, or yeah, Southampton. So all over the country, 
And then once you get even better, you might decide, hey, I think I want to travel for the sport over to Paris um, or Belgium. So The popularity is telling. As the sun set, round net was still to be played long into the night. Staying on the trend of handball sports, some of the team travelled to Shepherd's Bush to find out more about the game of fives. Now, the origin of the word fives is uncertain, but it probably refers to the fingers on one's hand. Growing in popularity by the end of the 19th century, public schools started to play competitively with the first recorded match between Eton and Harrow in 1885. But what I want to know, Rachel, is just how popular the sport really is nowadays. Fives is a ball game played by two or four players in a court enclosed on three or four sides, with a hard ball being struck with your hand. The objective is to force the other team to fail to hit the ball upwards off the front wall. Fives has many rules that are similar to other court type games, such as tennis or squash. The main one is that the ball is only allowed to hit the floor once. The pair whose turn it is to hit the ball up must do so without the ball hitting the ground. So we took a very complicated tube journey down to the Westway Sports Centre to try it out for ourselves, gardening gloves and all. Gloves are interesting, they're very tight to your hand, yeah. padded on the inside, I wouldn't want to be backhanding anything. Um, but no, so like when I've stopped playing now, my hands don't hurt anymore, so they do the job. When I was at school, my friend went along to like a taster session of fives, and uh, I hadn't gone to that, but he told me the next week, he was like, you're gonna really enjoy playing this sport. Um, and I went along the next week, and I've been playing fives ever since. 16 years now, I think I've been playing it. Westway is a really cool project, um, trying to get more like community into it which is uh, a great idea because a lot of the people who play just play from school um, but I got involved with Westway uh, so I was finishing my university studies started doing a bit of coaching and thought it would be uh, awesome to get involved with uh, this project so uh, yeah I've been, been working here for about a year now we had uh, we had some local school children here yesterday which was brilliant um, Covid derailed everything that we were trying to do before that um, but we had yeah 20 year five students down yesterday we've got another group coming next week they, they loved it I mean whether it was fives or whether it was just them running around hitting a ball on a court uh, is <laughs> debatable but they were having a great time and that, that's what we were after um, so yeah we, they seem to love it um, and they're coming back next week and again after that so it should be good I love how many different ways there are to play it. I'm tall and can't really bend down very low, but I have decent reactions and decent reach, so I can play it up front and volley everything. Other people might prefer, you know, a stamina fest where they're playing these really long rallies from the back of the court, loads and loads of shots all the time. And you get matches where it's one of those players playing against one of my type of players or some other type of player and I love that contrast and then the camaraderie of everyone sort of playing it for the enjoyment of it. You have these competitive matches going on but at the end of the day everyone there just wants it to be a good game and I really like that. After an hour or so of high intensity sport it seemed as though Matthew Cox had got a new hobby to deal with. Yeah, there are a few rules you need to like get the hang of at the start, but then once you've sort of got your head around them, it's really fun and yeah, good to let some steam out for sure. They were really helpful here. They let us ask as many stupid questions as we could and were super helpful in coaching us through it. With an evening's hard graft on the court, we were left with sore hands, bruised shoulders, but a five-star experience. And now, for a bit of a change of pace, our third and final sport comes from a little closer to home. Lawn bowls has long been a feature at Village Greens in the UK, but has always been synonymous with a slightly older demographic. We went down to Cambridge Bowls Club in Twickenham to see if that really is the case. We're here in Cambridge Park Bowls Club in Twickenham, a club celebrating its 102nd year uh, since its inception. Um, we're going to give it a go. We've got a few people uh, that have tried inside, they're going to give it a go on the outside and we're going to speak to a few of the members here. Uh, we're at a roll-up on Wednesday, so there's members of all different ages, 
um, all different abilities. And yeah, we're going to see what Cambridge Park Bowls Club has to offer. Cambridge Park Bowls Club was founded approximately 102 years ago. And this going on out here today, every Monday, Wednesday and Friday, we have what you call a general roll-up. So anybody can come down who's a member of the club and join in. And then after two hours, they stop and they join to the bar for a, a few liquid refreshments. Out here bowling today, we have a whole range of people. There's a chap out there, a young chap, who's, this is his first time on the green. And then you've got other people who've been bowling for 30 or 40 years. I enjoy the, the, the company of the people down here. They're all very, very friendly and you can have a good chat to them, a good laugh and a joke. Especially if you live on your own. Just come to a club like this and you're many, many new friends, which is a great help. We are also in partnership with Rules, the disabled charity, uh, with disabled bowling. Every week, Rules bring down a handful of people, sometimes a dozen, and we teach them how to bowl. It's quite a simple game, really. Anybody can play it. Um, just one thing, the balls are not round, they are biased, so that they either bend to the right or to the left, depending how you hold the bowl. The object is to get near the jack, which is the little white thing. And uh, you play in teams of either two, one, three or four. Uh, I've been part of the club since 2018, so that's five, six years now. At first we were like thinking, oh, bowls, so kind of not, not sure what to really expect. But when we came down here, we met a couple of friends from a pat from our past. I tried it, we enjoyed it, and we kept playing. I'm a level one uh, coach for Bowls England, and basically uh, we've just been coaching new players that come down, or just people who mostly want a little bit of practice. We were trying to raise more awareness of uh, disability bowls and obviously try and get them to be part of, part of the green as much as anything else. I've played a few sports before, like badminton, hockey and stuff like that, but I never really got to know the people there. They were just very too into the sport and not really too into the actual people, so I was never really stuck with the club. And then I just kind of played bowls, and even though a lot of these people are, are significantly older than me, I just enjoy talking to them. With play finished for the day, it was time to get the thoughts of new recruits, Oscar, Ashling, and Ben. So we first got to try um, uh, indoor bowls, which is what they use um, when it's not, not summer. Uh, quite a vast space, I think we were all quite, quite surprised by that. Very quick, so it was about timing, it was about the pace, and it moved quite a lot indoors. Then we moved outdoors, and it was much more an emphasis on getting it down there. It's still a bit wet, still a bit soft, and um, yeah, so we uh, you know, felt it in the arm a little bit by the end. Yeah. So with indoor bowls, there's quite a lot of drift to it um, because of it being such a flat surface uh, and there's no drag from the grass. Uh, and then you also notice that when you put a lot of pace on it, it just does not stop. So with indoor bowls, it's a lot about putting a delicate touch on it and finding a line where it will drift inwards. Whereas with the outdoor bowls, it's much more straight line and about pace. I'd say definitely give it a try because I really enjoyed myself, as you can see here, it's very chill vibe. And um, I'll definitely be back. Uh, there's forms in the, in the clubhouse, so I'll be taking one. So that's that. We hope you've enjoyed learning a little bit more about London's more unusual sports and the people that play them. I've been Paddy Ardell. And I've been Rachel Higgins. And we hope you've been inspired to give some of these games a go as we approach the summer.